Today was the day I was going to dance Giselle as my farewell performance with American Ballet Theater. And it's hitting me, it's hitting me. I first encountered Stella in the fall of 1995. Uh, she was all of 16 or something and auditioning for our newly formed ABT studio company. I remember we were in Studio 6 on the second floor of 890 Broadway and in walks this beautiful young lady. And had all the, all the, the, the proportions and the sensibility of a ballerina. I introduced myself, uh, and that was, I was intrigued right from the jump. I think I can almost picture the rehearsal. Um, yeah, I remember marveling at how she could adapt to really distinct styles. I can see her doing this uh, en schema. Vastly different from the, the classical technique that uh, we had honed as kids. Delicate and bemused approach to this very difficult technical thing she was doing. And I was really transfixed by it. To have that kind of movement quality and uh, sort of gravitas. It was clear pretty soon um, after meeting her and after Stella joined that she was going to do great things. There was complete silence in the room and everyone in the room was experiencing what I was experiencing. ABT has, has, is renowned as a company of stars, if you will. Uh, and I think that's the easy way to explain it, but really what's the underpinning is that uh, every artist is an individual, and they have a very, and should have a very individual approach. She never shied away from character roles. Uh, a lot of principal dancers just want to do the leads in ballets, but, but Stella saw the merit in, in taking on even minor roles and, and turning them into something 
with some some heft and some weight. Stella was one of the artists that refined the notion that you can have your own approach. You don't have to have your own version. Many times in the ballet world, people want to have their own unique version. I had, these are the steps I do to this music. Nobody else does it. Uh, whereas she would go, no, 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 this is the choreography. I am going to do that choreography, but deliver it in my way. And understood that there are no small roles, that um, that each, each role plays a significant part in sort of the bigger picture. And that to me is the real test of a of an artist that's completely reverent to what the material is. It's not just about getting the steps together and learning the choreography and learning which wing you come out of. It's definitely digging deep into character, researching what other ballerinas had done prior. Those are all things that I I will miss and I, I really cherish to get to work on these iconic roles with these incredible ballerinas and coaches was something I'll never, I'll never forget. Principal dancer, that promotion was with, within her sights, uh, but she was sidelined by this by this injury that took many months to diagnose. She had that heinous injury uh, right after I had said to her, "You're going to do Giselle." It was just one of those injuries that uh, was was tough to identify and treat. I think bigger, more severe than any of us understood at first. I went from dancing at my absolute strongest and most confident and with the most motivation and excitement to uh, to not being able to walk. I remember trying to console her saying, you need to let this Giselle go. You just let it go. Pay attention to your body. So to go from that point to that point was certainly uh, life-changing. You know, you're injured, it's out of your control. Turn every bit of attention to healing your body. Long story short, uh, it took about 18 months for me to return to the stage. Throughout all that, um, she, she stayed positive. She had her moments, of course, um, but she, she didn't lapse into self-pity. Every time I would see her face to face or experience her energy, um, she put me at comfort because I could see that she was determined. She maintained her friendships. She stayed supportive of her friends and colleagues. And she was going to take as long as it took, but she was going to get back. And she just kept her eye on the ball. And just with grit and determination, she just kept fighting. So we just pulled back and gave her the time and support to do it. Ultimately, through through that, that crucible of recovery, relapse, she emerged. And then she just kept proving me wrong, <laughs> month after month, until it was like, oh my God, you're back. Gradually, she just really started to blossom again at this late stage in her career. I remember one of the big joys in my life as a director was to be able to promote her to principal. At that point, I had been in ABT for 19 years, and I had definitely gotten to a place where I was very happy because I had thought that maybe that boat had gone by. 
that the timing wasn't going to work out for her. When I got the the text that she had been promoted, um, and it was around, around that time in the season when promotions usually happen. I realized, I said, you know, this is poetic justice. You know, this is, and, and it's, and she did it. I didn't promote her. She showed that she deserved it. I was hoping it would come her way, but I'd been kind of conditioned to just, just going with the flow, not getting hopes too high. But when Kevin said my name, he had, he had announced a few promotions. I saw a video actually, uh, the room just erupted in applause and for, for a few minutes and Stella just burst into tears. Crumpling up into a little ball for a moment. I'm sure it was just for a moment, but I, that moment felt like five years. And it was so clear that it was the last thing she had expected. Five years of memories flashing through my brain. I, I think a lot of people were thrilled to see Stella achieve that position. And having been kind of the underdog, um, I think that also had a, a big impact on the company and on the dance world. And she confided a little later that um, she had resolved that this was going to be her last season. <laughs> and that I derailed it by promoting her because now she had to live up to it and extend her, her dancing career a little bit longer. And I will cherish, cherish that forever. But I took great joy in doing it. I think it's like a, a nice guy's finish first type, um, type story that doesn't, doesn't happen all that often. Um, so when it does, it's definitely cause for celebration. I'm still celebrating even though she retired. again and I get called in uh, for a meeting with Kevin and he tells me the amazing news that I will have my debut as Giselle Wow So she was cast to do Giselle, which was her dream role. She had watched Generations. It was a role she wanted to do. She she would go to the public arts, um, performing arts library, research Giselle, watch all the videos, read all the books. She came to the rehearsal with ideas that some we helped shape and some we didn't need to. She just really nerded out on this role because she was so excited to take it on. But she didn't come saying, what's next? <laughs> How do I do this? She knew what she wanted from it. What a incredible thing to hear. You know, I think that it was just one of those roles that came late to her in her career. It feels like all of my ballerina dreams had come true in that moment. There are the technical criteria that she can meet. She has a buoyant jump. She has this beautiful, lyrical, soft upper body. She had imagined what it would feel like to be Giselle in those positions physically and in that situation um, theatrically. Very ethereal, so uh, she can she can convince you that she's a ghost um, 
floating through the air. And in the first act, she can take on the, some of the, the more difficult choreography and, um, and, and nail it, handle it with a blow. She was just completely right. Her first one was just a full blown performance. For a long time, June 13th had a certain significance um, because it was slated to be the date of my farewell performance of Giselle um, to help me retire from ABG. When we, when we broke into quarantine in mid-March, we didn't really know what was going to happen if uh, if she would still be able to perform. Ooh, this isn't a two month thing. This is going to go on for quite a while. Uh, and then as it went on longer and longer, I thought, God, there's going to be a lost generation here. As the weeks went on and tours were canceled and, and the pandemic really spread and it, and it hit New York especially hard. And then I thought, ooh, and what about the ones that are at the peak of their career, you know, this is their moment, you know? It soon became evident that she wasn't going to get her show and the Met season was canceled and... Then, I thought specifically of Stella because she had told me in the fall that she wanted this to be her last season. We toyed with the idea of, of deferring it to the fall, but I think she was just ready to turn the page. This is the moment where I, for the first time, felt familial with her. I, I did feel... The grief of not being able to perform once again. I was fighting for my child, you know, the, this... I, I, I knew she had the strength to process it and deal with it, but the unfairness of it was, was really sad. We tried to reclaim it on a certain level. I feel like everyone was trying to find different ways to adapt. Stella was already going to be transiting uh, into her new role as director of Cospa and uh, artistic director of Cospa. I wanted to find a meaningful way to honor my 24 years. And I thought, well, let's let's see let's see if we can. Uh, do something special, we can do a video. Doing the craft that I dedicated so many years to. We can create some work and you can have your last performance. So we cooked up a ski. If I couldn't have the big last performance of Giselle on the Met Opera stage, then Working with these amazing artists would be truly meaningful. such a deep appreciation for what 
this art form can do to help people. Dance is just this incredible challenge on so many levels and you're never gonna get it right, but when you approximate getting it right, it's just a thrill. When the lights go down and they're transcended to a different world. And when you give it your all and you give it your best and you know that you couldn't have done any better. It's about a mystical way of communicating without words uh, that speaks directly to the soul. There's, there's a real magical feeling that washes over you. And you can only do that if you have an honest, authentic view of what it is that you're doing. It's rare, <laughs> but, but when it happens, it makes all the, the, uh, all the work worthwhile. It's for all of those reasons. For all those reasons that I have no problems dedicating my life uh, to trying to keep the art form alive. It's just being with one another and taking on life and trying to have an, an impact, I guess. And so I feel so grateful that I was part of that on one side of the proscenium, as they say, and so now um, I hope to continue that on the other side. Thank you.